Hello, Ron Mithril here once again, getting back to Mega Man Battle Network 4. So now that we've wrapped up the second running of the Red Sun Tournament, it's time to head over to Blue Moon for some cleanup. Ah, glorious non-crisis music. Sadly, we're pretty much going to be tearing right through it, because due to the flow of the game, I can't possibly show any new scenarios during the Blue Moon Tournament second running. Reason being, the only two scenarios in the game that I have not yet shown are the other two soul scenarios. And since I got two new souls on Blue Moon as well, I'm not going to get the third one. But for those curious about the tournament progression, just to see what I had this time, let's get right to the tournament tree. And so, with the second running of the Blue Moon Tournament out of the way, here we are back at Naxa. It's time to go deal with plot and repairing the net and going after the asteroid. All those nice and gamey details. So we may as well deal with that and log the rest of the second run mystery data. Now there is one piece of mystery data that does have a note to it, and that's the one labeled Park 1 through Town 4. This is the small isolated part of Park Area 1 that you can only get to during the end game where you have to deal with that Nebula Navi that tries to self-destruct on you. You can only access it by going through Town Area 4, and there's one piece of blue mystery data there. So anyway, mystery data, won't you? And so here we are at the endgame. We've just defeated Laser Man, and so all we have to do now is take out Dark Soul Mega Man and Duo. But that can wait. Here on Blue Moon, we still have a little more cleanup to take care of. These guys, they're gonna be fine just staring at Dr. Regal. Duo, he's nice and patient, he'll wait for us. We have some navvies we need to go track down. And so, back to Electopia. And back to Elect Town. Run, Len! Save us from the crisis music! Flee onto the net! So our first target is over in Town Area 4. Going through Joe Mon Electric, that gets us nice and close. Right through here. And we can get there a bit faster still if we use the sea slider path. Down we go. So since we're on Blue Moon and we already had the Metal Man scenario on this run, we actually have both paths to Town 4 open, but we just need the upper path. Alright. In we go. May as well grab this. Just a bunch of one-way panels to get through. Now this path, this leads to story progression. This is the exit that goes through the undernet and into the isolated part of Park Area 1. We don't need that. We need this little dead end right here, and not the viruses that were right in front of it. bit rude, that. But this will finish him off. So then, this dead end. Hi there, number man. All right. 
Let's see if we can start off by hitting you with this. Yes, we can. Whoa. Okay. I wasn't quite expecting that out of him. He seems to have given up on the number balls and he's just going crazy with dice. Now there we go. I don't think I've ever seen him do that. Got rid of one of the number balls anyway. And there we go, Number Man is down. And so with that, we have a Number Man chip. Looking pretty cool with those dice. Number Man, bomb three ahead, hits nine square. So we'll go ahead and put him in the folder. And back once we can demonstrate his power. So this seems like a good place to demonstrate Number Man. When you summon Number Man, he throws one of his dice bombs. It does his base damage times whatever he rolls. So for example, since his base damage right now is 30 and he just rolled a 4, he did 120 damage to everything. With the right buffs, Number Man is something to be feared. For the maximum effect, you really want it to land on an empty panel. That way, once it goes off, it'll do more damage and it'll spread all around itself once it does explode. If it just hits a single target, it's not going to do nearly as much. But with that, we have one more target to go after. This time we're headed for Undernet 3. We can get there quickly enough. Banner links. They are awesome. In through the Sharo satellite. This takes us right to Undernet 3. To get where we're going, we need to take the path as though we were on our way to Undernet 6. So, right down through here. And viruses, of course. Continuing on, we'll go through here, we take this warp, and we end up over here. Now we go around here, and take this path, and right at the end of the loop, it's Metal Man. So let's see here. Not the best opening selection, but we can at least speed things up. Let's see. That's a bit better. Actually, we can blind you first, see what that does to you. Okay. We do have Pile Driver. Okay, you're getting the full brunt of that. And there we go, Metal Man is down. And so we have a Metal Man chip. Looking stylish there. So let's see here. 
Metal Man, 160 damage break element. Iron Fist crushes one square ahead. Simple enough. So, back once we can demonstrate his power. And so, time to show off Metal Man. For the most part, Metal Man is a pretty straightforward chip. However, there are a couple of things to pay attention to with it. The main thing is he just punches the square right in front of where he's summoned. He's break element, meaning he can go through guards. But there is one little secret to him. If you hold down the A button, you can actually move where he's summoned. So you can better select where you want to punch. Metal Man overall is a pretty straightforward chip, but useful all the same. Definitely has his purposes. And so with that, we've pretty much reached the end of the second run. All our cleanup is taken care of. Now before calling it, I was asked to give an update on what my library is looking like, so let's check that out. We have 136 out of 150 standard class chips. Most of the ones that I'm missing at this point are level 3 chips. Things like Binder 3, Boomer 3, and most of those we're going to be getting them during the course of the third run. Mega chips, we have 33 out of 60. Still don't have any of the DS Navi chips, because the methods I've been told for getting them don't seem to work. For example, I tried using a V doll because that's the only real way that you can make a dark hole while still in light karma. So I had a dark hole on the field, I S ranked an Omega Navi, but I still got the SP chip instead. Giga chips we have 3 out of 5, haven't gotten any more of those just yet. Still the same two secret chips, Gunsoul X and Z Saver. And 21 program advances. A lot of the ones we're missing are still the level 3 program advances, and so we're still missing some chips for those. So with that, let's head back over to Red Sun. So back over here on Red Sun, our chip library is looking much the same. We have the exact same 136 standard class chips, and so again the same ones missing. We'll be covering most of this during the third run, or at least I'll be grinding for them off camera. We have 33 out of 60 mega class chips. The main difference here is the Soul Navi chips, basically. Other than that, we pretty much have the same selection. And the same 3 Giga chips again, just different by version, same secret chips, and same 21 program advances. So with that all shown off, pretty much all we have left to do is go defeat Duo once again. And so with that, we've defeated Duo yet again, and we can pretty much just skip all this. For those wondering, absolutely nothing changes about the ending. I actually went ahead and looked, just to make sure, and yeah, no one knew in any of these scenes, nothing new said, and of course no acknowledgement that we've been through all this before. No wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff going on here. Just a bunch of cutscenes that, well, we've already seen. and rather slow, dull credits that we actually cannot skip. Yep, I just tried hitting every button, nothing skips this. Ah well. So with that, that's the end of the second run of the game. One more run to go to get the final souls and access the actual post-game areas, so we'll be doing that next time. Now most of the third run is going to be done off-camera. Simply due to the flow of the game, the only two scenarios that I have not yet shown occurred during the title drop tourney. So, I'm going to have to go through the rest of the game, log all the mystery data, just to get back there to show the final scenarios. So, that's going to take a little time to do that. Also, I'll have to grind for all the remaining chips, do the other program advances, fill out the library, that sort of thing. So, it's going to take a little bit. I am also going to be going on a bit of a break, due to the fact that it's October at the time of recording this, 
Now, of course, if you're watching in future vision, trademark patent pending, this hiatus may already be over and there may be more videos in the playlist. But at the time of recording this, it's October, so I have to get geared up for the yearly Silent Hill project. I'm hoping to get just a quick updates video up along the same time as this, just to let everyone know exactly what's going on. Also cover some frequent questions I've been getting lately, that sort of thing. But we will be returning to this project after Shattered Memories is taken care of. Also, since this is taking a bit to get through these credits again, something I was thinking about, what I was saying about the Kendo Man scenario, that the conflict resolution had very little, if anything, to do with Kendo Man himself. Thinking about it, there was one scenario that was even worse about that, Spark Man. You never even see Spark Man until the actual battle. Basically, the entirety of the scenario is just about Terry being a jerk. Kind of disappointing, really. I actually really like Sparkman EXE. Maybe that's one reason I keep him in my folder so much. I kind of feel sorry for the guy. I really like him. That and he is just one of the more useful summons in the game. Blinding all the enemies? Heck yeah. Credits, Joel. Credits. One more credit to sneak in there. already seen all the credits. And with that, I think one outro cutscene to skip. Yep. And so we're back to the title again. No new completion marks because, well, we didn't technically complete anything else. But we do have access now to start game three. So again, opening cutscenes. We know the plot. Go ahead and take care of all the opening stuff here. Get our PET. And we know the mail we have. We know everything we were allowed to keep. And so we're just gonna run over here. Oven problems. So we'll go in for our force tutorial, non-tutorial. Because we're now dealing with Metar 3. And so that's pretty much the major thing about the third run, is we have level 3 viruses running around. That's pretty much to be expected. See if we can maybe get a guard 3 out of all this. That'd be a pretty nice way to end the video. Don't suppose you guys want to cooperate with that? Not so far. Man, I should have had Collector installed. The RNG is an evil beast. So with that, that's where we're going to call it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.